All right, now moving on to our third to the last speaker for tonight, Dr. Marivic C. Agurto Mercadal, or Dr. Avic, was a BS psychology graduate at the University of Santo Tomas, where she met her husband, Dr. Gerard. They have been together for more than 21 years and have been blessed with two beautiful girls, Marga and Cheska. During her residency training, her interest in gyneco gynecologic cancer blossomed. She then pursued further training in gynecologic oncology and robot robotic surgery at the National University Hospital, Singapore, and at the Jose Arreyes Memorial Medical Center. She is a fellow of the Philippine Obstetrical and Gyne Gynecological Society, an advocate of women's cancer care and prevention through education of women. She is also a member of the Philippine Society for Cervical Pathology and Colposcopy. Currently, she is a practicing consultant at various hospitals. The Medical City is one of them. And she is also a faculty at the Ateneo School of Medicine and Public Health while completing her MBA in Health. Fun facts, Dr. Avic bakes, cooks, and she is a certified bookworm. When it comes to women's health, mother knows best, especially if she's a doctor. Listen to the expert's advice on empowering women through awareness, what every woman should know about their reproductive health. Streaming live from Ortiga Center, Pasig City, Philippines, ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Avic Agurto Mercadal. And good evening. Thank you for that kind introduction. And it is such an honor to be part of the Global Women Who Rule for 2022 and to speak beside these 21 beautiful women and powerful women whom you have heard and will be hearing more for, from, from tonight. So I would like to extend my deepest gratitude to the new channel and to um, Ms. Apple Esplana Manansala for creating this venue for all women to come together to share our experiences and advocacies and to empower all women here tonight through awareness. So I am Avic, and an, an obstetrician and gynecologist with specialty training in cancer care for women. And there are many health issues and cancers affecting the females, and most of them are preventable. So that's why this evening, I would like to empower all of you through awareness on what you should know about your reproductive health, um, specifically on uh, some cancer prevention that are relevant uh, for women. So first, let me define for you what is reproductive health. So reproductive health is the um, state of a complete well-being and the optimal condition of the female's reproductive system during all of the stages of a woman's life. So that's from infancy, pubertal development, to reproductive years, uh, during pregnancy, delivery, and postpartum period. So until her menopause. So I'm sorry, I think some of my slides, um, the um, animation of my slides are not working. So um, in this slide, uh, actually, I wanted to present to you some of the female organs, um, our fe the female organs, which are the uterus where babies grow when we get pregnant, um, the cervix where the baby comes out from the uterus into the vagina, and uh, vital also are the ovaries and the fallopian tubes since the ovaries um, produces necessary hormones that are vital to the daily function of a woman. So that is to regulate her menstruation, for pregnancies to occur, and to protect her vital organs like the heart and bones. So also important is the breast. So there are a lot of uh, benign and uh, malignant conditions that can arise from the breast tissues and it is important for um, women to have knowledge and uh, to consult for uh, monitoring and screening for breast diseases. Okay. So um, at the back of this uh, photo actually, so I have um, the common excuses why the gynecologist uh, will not 
Oh, I mean, some patients will not seek consult to a gynecologist. So a lot of women will always have reasons and why she should not visit her gynecologist even when she's already having irregular menses or no menses for two months, three months, or even for a year. So actually having missed menstruation when you're not pregnant puts you at high risk of having um, cancer like endometrial cancer. So this should already... Um, be warning signs for patients to seek consult to a gynecologist. Or sometimes women can feel some lump in her breast or uh, in her abdomen, but they would just dismiss it, dismiss it to uh, maybe having, having gained some weight. So uh, in my practice as a gynecologist, there are some common excuses that patients will say why they will not um, seek consult to a gynecologist and that is when their menses um because their menses come regularly or they don't feel anything wrong with their body they are afraid to see a gynecologist especially when we do the internal examination on them they are busy with work and have no free day or they don't have an extra budget to go to a doctor or do the test or they need to take care of their home and their kids so these are the common reasons that they give and exactly, it's because this is what uh, a mom or a woman um, would would be in her family. So most moms are super moms. So their concerns, their excuses are actually valid concerns. And because they had a lot of things on their plate that they need to do. So women, especially moms, are our modern day superheroes. And this photo actually sums up the things that what a woman is so this it did not even did not even include a woman working no so aside from that these things that she needs to do at home she also needs to work so sometimes um they can do a lot of things except think of themselves and think of their health so that is why we appreciate very much the strength the character and the power of a woman woman so given the importance of our dear uh, women in our lives, our mothers, grandmothers, daughters, nieces, best friends, teachers, co-workers, or even ourselves, we should know how to take care of our health and when to see a gynecologist. So sometimes in trying to save money or time, a woman ends up spending more money and more time for diseases that actually can be prevented and diagnosed at the early stage of the disease. So a woman's, uh, that is why it's important for our superwoman to have their regular checkup. So that's the women's wellness exam. So without any symptoms or concerns, they just need to go to the doctor to see their gynecologist to make sure that everything is okay with their bodies. So a women's wellness examination includes a full physical examination um, including most specifically for the breast and uh, pelvic examination, health screenings um, as needed for their age and health issues um, that can be done, um, including those for their comorbidities like hypertension, if they are diabetic, obese, or have cholesterol problems. So all these can be screened. Vaccinations, especially for the preventable cervical cancer, the human papillomavirus um, vaccine, uh, which is actually our, the proven uh, vaccine that fights against cervical cancer. So it can also be administered during your routine checkup with your uh, gynecologist. So this is also an opportunity for educating and counseling women regarding the different issues like menstruation, women's lifestyle, sexual health, contraception, and family planning, and menopause. For those uh, without health insurance who are saying that they don't have extra budget, there are actually government um, institutions or charity institutions um, that you can go to uh, wherein they conduct um, outpatient clinics for gynecology and obstetrics and they can screen you for the different diseases free of any charges. And sometimes you can use your PhilHealth to pay for these um, services. So I, I just want to talk about um, some of the most common uh, cancers um, affecting the women. So it is important to know about this so that we can actually prevent them and diagnose them early. 
So breast cancer is the most common cancer among Filipino women, and it is actually the third leading cause of cancer-related deaths in the country next to lung and liver. So early detection of breast changes and prompt medical consultation may lead to a higher likelihood of a successful treatment. So one important thing that um, women should know is how to do breast uh, self-examination or BSE. So this is very simple. You don't need to spend anything. Um, it's very effective for women to detect any noticeable changes in your breast. So you can um, do this maybe about 10 days from the start of your menstruation. So we don't usually do, that, do this when you have uh, menstruation, when you're about to have menses or immediately after because there are home hormones uh, present in your body during menstruation that uh, can cause some tenderness and swelling in your breast. And some cysts may actually be present during this time, but when you try to do it far from your menstruation, maybe about 10 days, 7 to 10, 10 days, then um, those cysts will be gone. So you need to do this. You can actually stand in front of the mirror. Uh, you can raise both of your arms behind your back. Uh, and then check your breast, check for any changes. You can also do it by with your hands on the side and then uh, while holding your hips so that you can um, better visualize um, your breast and any changes. And then when you're in the shower, you can palpate for your breast or even when you're lying down, you can palpate for your breast. You can raise the arm of the breast that you are palpating so that um, you can um, better um, uh, identify any um, masses present in your breast. So you start from the middle, check your nipple for any discharge. If it is inverted, you check your areolar tissue, areolar area you can, using two to three fingers, palpate around your nipple going out and up until you reach your ar armpit or your um, axillary area. Because sometimes when you have breast cancer, or when you have breast cancer, this uh, bad cells can actually go to, your, to the lymph nodes in your axillary area. So you can check that while in the shower and or while lying down. So you, you should do this regularly so as to um, have early detection of any abnormal findings in your breast. And once you note any of these um, changes like mass, erosions, discoloration, erythema, or there's wound in your breast, go and see your gynecologist immediately. And uh, he, he or she will request um, the breast imaging for you and refer you to the breast surgeon. So how do we um, screen for breast cancer? So we can do it by doing the mammography. So a mammogram or a mammography is an x-ray picture of your breast. So women aged 40 to 44 years old should have the choice to start breast cancer screening once a year with mammography if they wish to do so. And the risk of screening as well as the potential benefits should be considered. Women aged 45 to 49 years old should be screened uh, annually by mammography and those uh, as well as those 50 to 54 years old. For those more than or equal to 55 years old, they can do annual screening or every two years. So that is from um, the American Cancer Society. Uh, next one is the cervical cancer. So this is um, very close to my heart. We, should, we really do uh, a lot of counseling and um, promotion on the awareness for cervical cancer because there are really a lot of patients suffering from this disease and maybe the knowledge about this is very is not uh, not yet um, uh, very known to a lot of uh, women. So what is cervical cancer? So cervical cancer is actually the cancer of the cervix. That's the lower portion of the uterus in contact with your vagina. So cervical uh, cancer is the second leading cancer among Filipino women and among women 15 to 44 years old and the fourth leading cause of female cancer-related deaths among Filipinas. So this is actually a preventable disease. And what is known about it is that it is caused by a persistent human papillomavirus infection. So the human papillomavirus infection 
is um, acquired by women through sexual contact. So when you have, uh, when you start to have sexual contact, it already exposes you to having this HPV infection. But it is said that uh, women actually have the mechanism to eliminate it from our body. But when it persists, it can cause changes in the cervix that can eventually lead to cervical cancer. So there are multiple uh, the risk factors or the reasons why you will have an increased risk for the disease is when you have multiple sexual partners at any time. So meaning you have more than one partner or partner of someone who had multiple sexual partners. For example, you only have one partner in your lifetime, but you were quite lucky to have uh, a, an, a husband or a partner who had many previous partners. So that already increases your risk of having the virus and eventually having cervical cancer. As early initiation of sexual contact and having multiple pregnancies can also be risk factors. And when you smoke, you use oral contraceptive pills and you had history of sexually transmitted diseases that also increases your likelihood of having a persistent HPV infection and eventually cervical cancer. So this is these are the presentation of cervical cancer. So patients will have abnormal vaginal bleeding or foul smelling discharge, pelvic and back pain, uh, loss of appetite and weight loss when the tumor is already big enough to obstruct your uh, bladder, your ureter or your bowels. You can have changes in your habits and also some leg swelling can be seen in patients with cervical cancer. It can also lead to a renal uh, failure for some patients, some patients needing dialysis. So this is quite um, a difficult uh, condition to have. So it's important that we uh, have, uh, we encourage our patients to have a regular screening for cervical cancer. So how do we screen? We screen by doing pap smear. So you can start as early as 25 years old for those with uh, sexual contact and um, human papillomavirus screening. So it's like the COVID-19 uh, uh, swab test, RT-PCR. So we actually just check for the presence of the virus in your cervix. So we start at 30 years old. So this is how big the problem of uh, cervical cancer is. So the WHO even said that one woman dies of cervical cancer every two minutes and we can prevent so HPV vaccination is another form of prevention. We can start it as early as 9 years old and can be routinely given at 11 to 12 years old until 26 years old. It is given two to three doses. Um, and uh, for 27 to 45 years old, it can also be considered as long as the patient and the doctor understands its benefit. Boys can also be given as early as 9 years old. So other screening conditions, so I just need a few more minutes. Um, for endometrial and ovarian cancer, it can be prevented by having routine ultrasound on regular consult with your, with your gynecologist, preventing the risk factors by uh, having a healthy lifestyle and maintaining your sugars and blood pressures within the normal range. Um, colon cancer, you can visit your friendly gastroenterologist and you can have routine colonoscopy starting 50 years old or earlier if with family history of colon cancer. So again, prevention is better than cure in most of these diseases. That's why it is important for women to understand uh, the different conditions that they can have. So another advocacy that the Philippine Obstetrical and Gynecological Society is actively advocating is the one that was previously presented uh, to put a stop against uh, violence against women and children. So uh, if you're having this, you can actually talk to your gynecologist and seek help also. So I hope I was able to impart with you the awareness among our women so among the diseases that you can have. So there are thousands of obstetricians and gynecologists in the different regions of the Philippines. And my only message to all of you is to empower yourselves. Let us empower each one of us and go seek your seek consult with your gynecologist to have a better health for all of us. Thank you very much. And again, thank you to the new channel and to the global women who rule 2022. Thank you.